Hello, and welcome to Vovork. I'm Brian Watrous, and this is part 20 of a 10-part video series in which we're exploring how to automate using the Realize Orchestrator. Way back in module number nine, I think it was, we learned how to create an orchestrator workflow that creates a single virtual machine. But what if you need to create 10 virtual machines, or 100 virtual machines, or 1,000 virtual machines? That workflow we saw before isn't going to cut it. What you need is to be able to employ some type of looping in your workflow. And that's what we're going to be talking about here in video number 20 and the following few videos. They're all going to be about looping in one form or another. And once you know about looping, instead of creating workflows like this one here, which is boring because it's just purely linear, it can only go in one path, what you're going to be able to do is create workflows that look more like what you see here. Can you see the loop? Uh, actually, if you don't see the loop, don't worry, you're going to see it uh, later on in these next few videos, but presumably you can see the loop. What you're looking at here is one form of loop. Uh, this uses a decision-based looping technique, but there's actually multiple techniques that we're going to be studying in this and the following videos. Let's talk about looping in general. If you want to do loops, you can do loops within your scriptable tasks using JavaScript constructs such as for loops, uh, for each loops, um, while loops, do while loops, and so forth. All the different JavaScript constructs for doing looping are available to you when you're creating your scriptable tasks. Now, the one caveat I would add here is that uh, for reasons that we won't go into right now, uh, I'll go into it. Um, it's a best practice to limit the amount of looping that you're doing within your JavaScript code in your scriptable tasks. The reason why that is, is um, has to do with the orchestrator's checkpointing capability. If you've never encountered or heard the checkpointing uh, capability described before, the, the idea is actually pretty straightforward and simple. The idea behind checkpointing is every time you run an orchestrator workflow, as the orchestrator workflow engine goes from one schema element to the next, 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 to the next. Each time we go to a new schema element, that's a checkpoint. An orchestrator writes out the complete state of your workflow execution so that if egads, your orchestrator server goes belly up on you or somebody powers off the orchestrator server, or if, if anything like that happens to the orchestrator server, instead of your workflow dying, and then you have to restart the workflow. With this checkpointing feature, you are able to simply restart the orchestrator server, and the orchestrator server will see, oh, that workflow failed. And instead of restarting the workflow, orchestrator will automatically resume the workflow at the point you left off at. But again, that checkpointing has a granularity of schema element. Each time we get to a schema element, we will, each time we get to a schema element, we will do a checkpoint and that's where we can start again. On the other hand, if we had something, so, so that's great to, to create a loop like you see illustrated here, but if you've got a loop in this scriptable task that is looping, let's, let's say we're creating virtual machines and it's looping in here, it creates virtual machine one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it's on, creating virtual machine 999,999 in that loop. If the orchestrator workflow, if the orchestrator server goes down at that point, when we're on the 999 VM, when orchestrator restarts and this workflow is resumed, we cannot resume on VM number 1 million. We'd have to go back to VM number one. So yes, you can do looping within your scriptable tasks, but you want to limit it if you want to take um, better advantage of the checkpointing feature that I've just described. So it, it arguably it's better to create a loop that looks like this than it is to create a loop within a single schema element. If you want to know about these JavaScript constructs that I've listed here, I'll give you some resources on how to look that up in a moment, but here's an example of a for loop. Uh, on the other hand, what I want to focus on in this uh, following set of, what is it, one, two, three, I think three different videos, is the ways of doing looping at the schema level. Instead of within a scriptable task, if you do the 
the looping at the schema level, that's good for a variety of reasons. It's, it's good to do looping at the schema level, one, because of that whole checkpointing thing I just told you about, but it's also good to do your um, looping at the schema level because it's more, let me go the right way, it's more obvious if I'm just looking at the schema, it's more obvious that there's a loop going on. I can see the loop right here, as opposed to if there's a loop inside of this one schema element, I can't see that just by looking at the, at the schema. So if you wanna make your schema really obvious that a loop's going on, this type of loop, or something else I'll show you later on, uh, three videos from now called a for each schema element. Um, those approaches from a, a visual perspective are arguably better. It's easier to see at the schema level that a loop's going on. So again, you can uh, use JavaScript to do looping. Plus uh, we have several different types of, of um, schema-based looping that you can do. The one that I keep going back to and showing you, this here is uh, what I call a decision-based loop because the way you get out of that loop or the way you decide to go back into the loop is based on a decision. In this example here, I'm showing a custom decision, but it could be, uh, that's not a custom decision, that's a basic decision. This could be a basic decision, it could be a custom decision, it could be a decision activity, but in each case, um, I can create a loop that uses some sort of decision to say when to go back into the loop as opposed to when to exit the loop. I call those decision-based loops. There is another type of loop that we'll talk about three videos from now called a for each loop. Uh, for each is its own special workflow calling schema element that unlike the workflow element, schema element that you've called before that calls a workflow once, this one calls whatever workflow you specify multiple times. But again, we'll look at for each later on. If you want to create loops within the JavaScript code that you create in scriptable tasks and actions and places like that, you need to know how to work with the looping constructs that JavaScript provides. So uh, if you don't know what they are, go to w3schools.com slash js. And uh, when you go there on the left side of the page, you'll see different sections. And all the ones I list here on this screen are important, but in particular, JS loop for, JS loop while, and JS breaks are ones that you should study. If you wanna create your own loops in JavaScript code, in your orchestrator workflows, in those scriptable tasks, study JS loop for, JS loop while, and JS break. Speaking of break, it's uh, time to break out of this particular video. This was just our overview of the different looping constructs that are available to you. In the next video, what we're gonna be doing is taking a look at one um, approach to doing decision-based looping. And in particular, what we're gonna be looking at, something that you'll commonly see done in orchestrator workflows is we're going to take as input something such as an array of virtual machines. And we're gonna loop through those virtual machines. So again, that's video number 21. This is 20. We're, we're done with 20. Let's uh, go meet me over on uh, video number 20. One. So see you there.